It's Tuesday, September 8th. It's about 6, oh, 6, 6.30. Just got home from work. I wanted to do kind of an overview of the drive line of this saw and maybe just an overview of the saw in general. I have probably neglected to do a recap of what this actually is. And it's been a handful of years where I think we brought that the trailer bed for this up to the ranch probably three years ago now. Uh, so I know I have a lot of new subscribers. I got a lot of new viewers that may not have been following this project from the early days. And what this is, in a nutshell, is this is a sawmill. This is my ability to process logs however I obtain them. And uh, in the last 15 years, I've only obtained dead trees, whether the porcupines eat the top off of them or the beetles kill them. I don't cut down any live trees uh, in the last 15 years that I've owned this property. I don't cut down live trees for firewood or to use for sawmill applications. When we first bought that property, there was a bunch of trees that we took down. We walked it with an arborist and an individual from the forestry department, and we tagged about 200 plus trees that were old and weak and overcrowded. So I went through that 120 acres and we cleared out some, just reduced the fire load. And a lot of the smaller trees turned into firewood. I think it gave us about 10 years of firewood, legit 10 years of firewood. And the bigger trees we stacked uh, in logs and we had a guy come up with a portable sawmill and we worked a deal with 50-50. He took 50% of the wood and we kept 50% of the wood and he didn't charge us to make boards and we could get boards or whatever he want. And he used a sawmill that uses a, a rotary blade, like a basically like a giant table saw blade. And while that's nice and it's good in the production application, you get a lot of waste. You, you, the thickness of your cut is called a kerf, and the kerf of a metal blade is almost a quarter inch. Now, and it may not sound like much with one or two cuts, but when you're doing dozens of cuts on a log, every time you're making a pass with that blade you're losing a quarter inch of material it can just be wasteful and then you make a lot of sawdust too which is what you need to clean up this red piece of one inch nylon webbing is um, what i'm going to use to set this up i just stitched it together before you saw this it had clips and um, i didn't want those metal clips going around banging into things so i cut this one and then this is what i'm going to use to set up the roller assemblies a metal or a steel bandsaw blade, the kerf on that is about a sixteenth of an inch and that makes a huge difference. Now you can also use, a lot of people talk about using a chainsaw, on an Alaskan sawmill, but you can lose three-eighths to a half inch of material with each cut depending on the size of the chain and blade that you're using, a uh, bar that you're using, excuse me, on your saw. So while a bandsaw like this is not the most um, production oriented sawmill it really helps you utilize the maximum amount of boards that you can get out of a log now for you them you people that may not quite imagine what this is just imagine this as a giant horizontal bandsaw that has a blade in it that can cut wood now this is going to have feet right i think i may have well i'm sure i've mentioned it before but probably not recently there, there will be 48 inch runners that I'm going to weld to the bottom of that angle iron. I don't have them on there now because I don't want to trip over them. And there will be wheels on them. And I built a log bed that's 23 or 24 feet long with 60 inches wide with angle iron. And these runners with the wheels are going to run down the angle iron. You're going to lay a bed, uh, the log on the bed, and then this will travel down the log bed I guess or the trailer um, making a pass single pass it's not I'm not using a blade that's going to have teeth on either side I don't need to cut in both directions that just makes the blade more expensive and a little more brittle because you don't have a um, you've got cut ends on either side so with that being said oh and then this whole assembly that this whole engine right here is on a is on a is on a horizontal bed here that can raise and lower up and down these four two by two steel posts. I've used an overhead garage door spring. It's a 60 inch overhead garage door spring and I'm using cables. And I haven't seen it done this way before. 
and you know you guys know I like to think outside of a box and I got a buddy that works for an overhead door company so I snagged a couple of these these were going in the scrap pile and I cobbled together this overhead spring system it's going to use garage door springs this is no heavier than a two car wooden garage door which is what these would be coming out of a uh, 6 inch spring could handle probably a 400 pound wooden door and this is not going to be that so I'll be able to use dowels and I'm going to make this cutting tray pretty much weight neutral and I've got thumb screws here on the back that'll be able to lock it in position I have one on either side ultimately I'm going to have a marker here that's going to delineate quarter inch so you just get in here with a wrench and of course I've covered it so I don't conk myself on the head uh, because I will but I um, where's my what you'll do is you'll loosen those two thumb screws and you'll come in with the breaker bar set on here and then you'll be able to raise and lower the entire cutting assembly as uh, well in in this case you're going to be lowering it as you're cutting more and more boards out of the log now here's the issue that I'm having and I think it, it may be confusing a lot of people because I really really appreciate everybody's comments and their help and their ideas on how we can make this thing work I really do but there have been a lot of people saying oh why don't you just flip the blade why don't you flip the blade and it's not the blade that's the issue it's the rotational direction of the drive gear that's the issue it's going to be going like this okay so yes you can take these blades and you can flip them but all that'll do is that'll make instead of the teeth going let me see instead of the teeth going this way so it can cut into the wood the teeth will just be going this way because it's the rotation that we need to change right and the problem with this not being able to change is it's a shaft driven assembly there's a plate here it's not a traditional sprocket like you see on an engine this is 90 degrees it's a flat plate square plate with four bolts there's a universal joint in here you've got a drive shaft that runs down this torque tube and it attaches here um, I cannot or at least I haven't been able to figure out how I'm gonna get that wait it goes this way see like it screws me up this whole rotational thing screws me up um, how to get that to reverse in this short distance here because if, if I cut this and I run it off center like this to run a friction wheel to spin this in an opposite direction that's a whole thing I need to build here and I just I don't have a lot of room unfortunately so this wheel will drive like this it's gonna drive the bottom of the chain like this regardless of which way this trolley cuts whether we feed from this side of the blade or we feed from this side of the blade the rotation is the issue and I am gonna retain the drum brake to be able to lock the drive wheel uh, if if something comes bad and I need to, to shut everything down I'll get into the safety mechanisms I do plan on building into this here in just a minute but I don't know I don't know you know it's not a few people have said oh you're pushing the blade into the material but it's actually drawing from the top so it's still pulling the blade through the material I mean this is a thin it's going to be a thin stain, uh, stainless thin spring steel blade so you won't be able to push anything on it um, but it's just it's ideal to be able to have it spin this way and be able to to have the power come from that part of the blade and your log is right there the way this is going to work is the stop for the log will be on this side and the power is coming up and over the top and pulling from the idler wheel I don't know is that gonna work man I don't know just wanted to show you guys what I'm looking at here and if somebody can come up with something somebody mentioned see and then this whole this is a, a ring and pinion setup it's almost like a differential in a vehicle there's a big ring gear here and then you've got a pinion gear there that drives it to convert this to a chain I just I don't know that you can without spending more money than I've got into this entire project you know I picked this bike up for a couple hundred bucks and it's I looked at it more of the engine. I didn't even consider the drive shaft would be an issue. Owie, 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 owie. Um, damn. Closer look at the toe in. 
this square steel is bolted to this plate. This plate has oval holes. As I mentioned before, if you loosen those three bolts and then you loosen this set bolt right here, which is currently loose uh, because I was changing the, the, this thing here, this can go about five or six degrees inboard and five or six degrees outboard. And that will change your toe in. I would show you, but right now it's tracking so nice. It's going right down the center of this drive gear here and it's going right down the crown of that idler wheel and that's without any bearings because you know you're going to have a bearing top and bottom here and there's going to be a bearing on the back to keep this blade from being pushed when you're feeding material through it this whole assembly is welded together and you have I we've set it up so we have the ability to stack to that line, it's two and three quarter. I got my good tape measure out today. <laughs> it's, uh, it's about two and three quarter inches. So it's I get five and a half inches of uh, total, right? Because you got top and bottom. If we move this back two and three quarter inches, it'll be about five and a half inches that uh, we can account for on a blade. And then what we do is you tighten this. You take a, uh, I think it's five eighths. There it is. Where is it? Five eighths, and as you tighten this threaded rod, it's a very long bolt. Actually, it pulls the whole this whole carriage assembly back towards me, and uh, this also has a pivot. There's a bolt that goes through here and through here and sandwiches it all together, and that's where this thing pivots. Shut up, dog. So yeah, picture it: horizontal bandsaw. I went through great measures to make sure the bottom of the wheels were lined up because that's really most important. You, I mean, it's pretty obvious that the back wheel is a smaller diameter wheel than the front. That really didn't concern me. The biggest concern is to keep this distance from the bottom of the trolley frame to the live edge of that blade the same on both sides so you can cut nice square boards and square beams and uh, I think I accomplished that. Well, I know I accomplished it. I'm within about a 32nd of an inch of tolerance. And quite honestly, I think that's as good as she's going to get. Oh, that's the voltage regulator. That's got to go somewhere else. Um, so anyhow, if I can't figure out how to reconfigure this, I'm just going to keep building it. Because I can. And we're going to try to cut with it. And we're going to see what happens. In reality, I'm not cutting any hardwoods with this. It's getting late. The lights are turning on. I'm not cutting any hardwoods. The oak, I have no interest in taking down any oak trees up there. We have madrone. We've got juniper. We've got some very hardwoods up there. But in reality, this is going to be used for pine. We have Jeffrey pine, ponderosa pine, lodgepole trees, which is a pine. And then we have uh, dug fir and blue spruce, all soft, wide-grained woods. And uh, this is going to be a manual feed. It's not like I'm going to put a power feed on this, so we'll just have to feel it. We'll feel it through. It may work fine. I don't know. Blade tension and not jamming it through the logs. In reality, it's going to be me that's using this thing, not anyone else. I'm not going to go into production mode and uh, mill up a bunch of trees for other people, I don't think. And, uh, you know, Skippy will probably be there. I would probably prefer this to be a two-person operation just because actually if we go that route I need to flip that tire because now the spokes on that front tire are going in the wrong direction am I just twisted enough to pull this tire all assembly apart and flip this wheel yeah <laughs> oh well I'm gonna go inside and eat some dinner Hopefully that answered some questions. Hopefully, uh, well, maybe it made some more questions for people. But I do encourage your thoughts. I like spreading out the thought process a little bit. And, uh, you know, maybe someone will come up with a gem. Or maybe it'll work as it sits. Maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. It's possible. I do that sometimes. Mountains and molehills, that is. But that's got to change. That's got to change. Anyhow, I'm going to go inside. Got to go. Got to run. See ya.